Hello and welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. You know, it's often a source of shame. Infertility is discussed in hushed tones between husband and wife and rarely discussed in open forums. Our guest in studio says that it's useful uh, if your friends, family, co-workers, and often your employers are supporting you in your fertility journey. Our guest is Mary Wong, traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, founder of Alive Holistic Health Clinic in Toronto, Canada, and also the author of the brand new book, Pathways to Pregnancy personal stories, and practical advice for your fertility journey. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Mary. Thank you for having me, Neil. I know there's a lot of uh, stigma, as we discussed in other segments, around infertility. Why did you write this particular book? I wrote it just because there is a lot of stigma, and I want to normalize that conversation and give a voice to all those that are going through it and educating all those others that have not been through it, again, just to normalize it. You've had your own issues with infertility, I, I do believe. If, if, my, if I may ask, are your own experiences part of your passion about fertility and traditional Chinese medicine? Yes, absolutely. And I came into it by a bit of a coincidence. My intention was to go into medical school and become a psychiatrist. But yet, through my path, I um, witnessed my grandmother who fell ill and she was deemed well, fatally ill, and they gave her two weeks to live, and it was Chinese medicine that saved her. So it opened up my eyes, and I thought, oh my goodness, we need to start a different conversation mm -hmm. and integrate that and have it highly available to everyone. And that's why I went into Chinese medicine. And with regards to fertility, yes, I did go through challenges myself. And like most people, you don't expect to have issues. In fact, when you're young, you're basically told, oh, you know, you better not get pregnant. So there's this air of when I want to get pregnant, it's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it really doesn't for one sixth of us. Meaning, mm -hmm. currently, right now, there are people who are experiencing fertility challenges who one day will have fertility challenges and who have had fertility challenges. Mm -hmm. Now, when we were we were talking about some of the, the stigma, being personally involved and having personal experience, infertility on the first hand, and on the other hand, you're talking about traditional Chinese medicine. This is something that, you know, you're, it's not the norm, especially when you're dealing with the traditional or the, I guess, westernized uh, fertility routes. Yes, you're absolutely right. And yet, in 20... 15, a study by Lee Hollander Rubin, and where she tracked women who did preconception treatment, which included acupuncture, prior to IVF, in vitro fertilization. And what they found was there was an increase in take-home baby rates. So wow. meaning, not an increase in pregnancy rates, but who cares if you can get pregnant if you're going to miscarry? What uh, counts is the baby. Absolutely. So it alludes to the fact that it, it increases and helps the quality of our eggs that are developing. And we know that acupuncture can increase blood volume to our reproductive organs, which carries with it oxygen, nutrients, take away debris, you know, all those kinds of things. And so it can help quality. And when a person is utilizing that in conjunction to Western medicine as necessary, like mm -hmm. IVF, then the Western medicine is working on quantity, whereas Chinese medicine is working on quality. Ah, part of the title of your book is Personal Stories and Practical Advice for Your Fertility Journey. We were talking about information and the sharing of information, kind of getting past the stigma, being a very useful tool when you've got a support system around you that may include your employers, your coworkers, not just your family and close friends. How does the book Pathways to Pregnancy address some of the ways to get a conversation started with people who may not have such a personal stake in your fertility issues. Absolutely. So, you know, when it comes to work, for example, you kind of have to get your feelers out because obviously not everyone is going to be supportive. And I've witnessed this myself with some of my patients. And so, but there can be some that are. So it may be a coworker. And even if you just confide in one person at work, that might be a good ability to have them who has your back to deflect questions, to even physically cover for you if you're actually going to a fertility clinic, which can take upwards to um, 
couple of hours a day, every day, while you're going through your fertility cycle. And um, the other piece then, too, with that, it's also um, at the home front, too, Mm. being able to create a community to help you to decrease the stress that's involved. So when it's your partner, instead of coming home and, you know, perhaps you're still doing everything, you know, sitting down and asking and saying, you know, can you help offload some of this stress, maybe do laundry or do some cooking like that. Sometimes we say the darndest things. Um, did you find that there were a lot of myths and um, misconceptions that were attributed to your situation that you realized, hey, this is not just me. It, they th- believe this or that about all people who are going through fertility issues. What were some of the uh, responses that you got that now you're able to quell some of those myths? Oh, for sure. I mean, uh, first of all, let's talk about the myths. So one, one myth is that uh, infertility is a woman's problem. And as we know, as fact, it's men are equally likely to have fertility challenges as women. And so it's not just a woman's conversation. And secondly, along with that, we also think that, you know, men are virile till the end of this earth. And again, sperm are um, compromised through lifestyle factors and the like. So it's not just that. And there are things we can do that can help that. So things that we can do for that help sperm, things that we can do that help egg. And um, there's also a third uh, misconception that fertility is strictly age-related. And in fact, even for a 20-year-old, any given cycle, it's about one in five chances of conceiving. However, you know, within a year, the, about 80% of a person that's 20 years old, they'll, they'll get pregnant. And as we age, there is a drop in the percentage. But it's not strictly age-related. And, uh, you know, there are other conditions and health challenges that precludes or diminishes our chances of conceiving, like thyroid issues, endometriosis, Mm -hmm. polycystic ovarian syndrome, and the like. When um, we navigate to your website, marywong.life, are we able to get uh, information about getting a copy of Pathways to Pregnancy at your website? Absolutely. There's links to Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and in Canada, Chapters Indigo. And basically, you'll find it at any bookstore near you, your mm-hmm. library. It's, it's everywhere. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. We've been in studio with Mary Wong. She's a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, founder of a live holistic health clinic in Toronto, Canada, and also the author of the brand new book, Pathways to Pregnancy, personal stories, and practical advice for your fertility journey. She's been in studio talking about some of her uh, personal experience with uh, fertility and infertility, as well as uh, some advice on how to get the conversation started and uh, get past some of the stigma that surrounds uh, infertility. It's been a pleasure talking with you, Mary. Thank you so much for having me, Neil. Thank you. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at healthprofessionalradio.com.au and also at hpr.fm. And you can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes.